A million. A million. Oh, there you go. There you go, my darling. A million. A trillion. A trillion. A million, trillion, trillion, trillion. So the campaigners say they'll keep on appealing the world's conscience to protect yeah. the planet and their future. Uh, you could be of some use, Norway. The Information Commission's and office, the body that regulates data privacy in the UK, has asked the Facebook whistleblower Francis Hungry to provide documents to support her allegations that the social media platform harms children's mental health. Facebook firmly denies the claims, but the Information Commissioner is a wants to see if the company has breached into the law. And she's been talking to our media editor, Amal Rajan. She's a former Facebook employee turned whistleblower whose revelations are reverberating around the world. Earlier this month, Frances Halkin handed over internal company documents to US lawmakers, which she claimed were evidence that the trillion dollar company harms children's mental health stokes division and puts profits before people. The company intentionally hides vital information from the public, from the US government, and from governments around the world. So the company... The Information Commissioner has just introduced a children's code, legally requiring companies to design sites to protect children. And Frances Halgan's revelations have piqued her interest. So we're looking at that publicly available information, but I've also written to her today to ask her for access to the full report Oh, darling, yes. allegations, oh. because what I want to do with that evidence is analyze it from the UK's per perspective. Are these harms applicable in in the UK, especially through the lens of children? And I want to see if these allegations point to any contravention of UK law, and then I will take action. In a statement on his Facebook page, Mark Zuckerberg said of the allegations by his former employee, most of us just don't recognize the false picture of the company that is being painted. He went on to say, at the heart of these accusations is this idea that we prioritize profit over safety and well-being. That's just not true. It's been an intense five years for the Information Commissioner, who regulates breaches of data privacy, such as that with Cambridge Analytica. She steps down in a few weeks, but has big concerns about the mismatch between her budget and those of the tech giants. She's also worried about the government's plans to reform her office. An independent regulator is really important to trust and confidence. My work on um, data and political campaigns would have been almost impossible to do if I had to take my marching orders from government. Regulators regulate. But if there is to be a new settlement between the tech giants and modern democracy, it's ultimately up to elected officials to turn years of chatter into action. Amol Rajan, BBC News. The actor William Shatner has made history today as the oldest person to go into space. The 90-year-old went on a 10-minute flight on board the Blue Origin rocket built by a company owned by the Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos. Uh, the man familiar to millions as Captain Kirk of Star Trek returned safely to Earth, describing his trip as a most profound experience. From Texas, our correspondent Sophie Long sent this report. We buy so much as the sun rose over the most right? desolate parts Nikki? of the Wild yeah. West. <laughs> William Shatner made uh, his way yeah. to the New Shepard fully automated spacecraft. William Shatner? Not leading the crew his alter ego commanded, but with three other passengers who would share this life changing experience. Two, one. They go up and down. Yeah. Yeah. More than 50 years after he first donned a spacesuit as Captain Kirk, William Shatner is now on his way to the final frontier. And there they are.
they are, over 328,000 feet, over 100 kilometers. Minutes later, as the new shepherd crossed the internationally recognized boundary of space, he became the oldest person in the world to float there, weightless. And the actor, who for decades played an iconic space explorer, became one. And the capsule touchdown. Welcome back, the newest astronaut. He emerged from the capsule, visibly moved by the adventure he said he hopes he never recovers from. Firmly back on planet Earth, he told me the beauty of what he'd seen was more profound than any words he could find or world record he'd broken. Uh, well, I wish I had broken the world record in the 10 yard dash, but unfortunately, it was how old I am. Would you do it again, though? I am so filled with such a, an emotion and such a feeling of a novel experience. I don't want to dissipate by thinking of another journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. There may be debate about whether he can be called an astronaut, but he has gone where no nonagenarian has gone before. Sophie Long, BBC News, Blue Origin, Launch Pad 1. Who? Uh, that's it from us now, BBC News. Who's not talking to you? Have a look. He's not here. Good evening, refuse workers whose